everyone. It's so good. It looks like you've had the most incredible program so far. I'm just like looking at it going, wow, in the morning you've had and just trying to step into what God is clearly already doing amongst you. I um, want to talk to you just a little bit about how I'm seeing church and what I'm seeing changing um, and just trying to speak from the point of view of what I'm hearing the Spirit say uh, to the church. And, and the Lord's been talking about uh, like a Noah calling, uh, a kingdom architect type vibe where we're thinking, okay, he was building this ark because uh, he knew what was like what lay ahead and people must have been thinking what are you what are you doing like why are you building an ark um, you know there's no water there's nothing happening and and I think that that might kind of understanding is that we're headed towards something and therefore we need to move the way that we're doing things. We need to move how we're postured primarily. Um, it's a work in our hearts primarily. Um, but, but God is wanting to shift us so that we, we're not going to build an ark, but we're going to begin to build in such a way as to rescue um, people. And I really believe that we're headed towards a global harvest like none that we have ever seen um, before. I'm really excited about that. Uh, we wrote a book, Unleashed, if you're if you're interested, uh, the Axe Church, I don't know if Andy's already said anything about it, um, but just as I was writing it with my husband Gavin, there was just this stirring in my heart from the Lord going, you can't just examine the early church and, and write this book and not start to live it. Um, and so there was a real feeling like stirring over probably five or six years, just having my heart broken over the church and just hearing God go, there's more, there's more, there's more life that I want to bring. There's more transformation that I want to bring. There's more people that I want to reach. And I've just been heavily influenced in that by the Iranian um, church and just seeing them move into the underground space and, and just uh, worked quite a bit in Turkey with them. And that's been inspiring. I think so much of what I've learned in the last 21 years, I'm having to unlearn, is what I would say. I, I think so much of the training, so much of the journey, um, I've been in the Baptist leadership for 10 years. Um, I, I love the Baptist, and I, I'm working with them still. Um, I, just, I just feel like so much I've, I'm having to just go, is that relevant to the architecture of what we're building now? and what we need for the future, and what of what we've had needs to be laid down, and, and what actually needs to be carried forward. And I almost feel like we're in another moment here where we're going, where the Lord's going, don't pick up what I've told you to put down, because I said leave it in COVID, and I mean leave it. And what I want you to do is actually a lot less than what you were doing before, because I want you to make space for me and my presence um, so my understanding of church used to be very, very Sunday focused, used to be very, very, you know, coffee cups and an hour and a half and a welcome on the door of the church. And I'd speak to people like once a week and say, how are you doing? Uh, and, and maybe hear a tiny bit of their life. And I feel like God's going, that is not discipleship. That is not where I want you postured. I am not calling you to a Sunday thing. I am calling you to everything, your whole life with my people, to walk fully with them all the time, every day in relationship. So when I think of church now, and I just want to give you four, as quick as I can, words that I think of around church now, and, and actually real biblical-centered words that God is speaking. Um, and the first one is, I believe there's a shift into family that we're seeing, a dramatic shift into family. And you know, Psalm 68 and verse 6, he puts the lonely in family. And as we get to the end of the Old Testament in Malachi, we hear, don't we, the, this incredible word about the turning of the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children to the fathers. And I feel like God keeps bringing me there and I'm going, what are you saying, Lord? And he's been saying, notice, Anne, that over these hundred years of silence, one of the first things that happens when John the Baptist comes to the fore is the same message. I've, he's come to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children to the fathers. And I believe it's about a turning that God is doing in his people, a turning towards him 
again afresh and are turning towards one another. And it, it's like an, it's a completely open invitation where God is going, I want to be cornerstone again. I want to be everything again. I want you to give me all of your life. I want you to surrender everything and trust me that I have your life in my hands. And I, and I feel like in the West, I don't know about you, but I have like put all kinds of stuff up around my life to, to make sense of my journey. And God's just been stripping it all away and just going, it's me and you, Anne. Do you trust me? It's me and you. This is a faith road. And, and I'm putting you, and he's been putting me in a family with people um, who I never expected to journey with. And he's going, now love one another. Do you know what that looks like, Anne? Do you know what it looks like to love one another? Because it doesn't look like what you've been doing. And I realized that the, the level of busyness and the level of technology and all these other things was pre preventing real family. And yet when we come back to the greatest commandment, you know, it is to love the Lord our God with all our hearts and all our minds and all our souls and all our strength and love one another as you love yourself. And I feel like only by the power of his spirit is that possible. So I can't love in my own strength. I'm just saying, Lord, would you pour out your love into my heart by the power of your spirit? I think it's Romans 5 verse 5. And that's a daily prayer that I'm praying at the moment, pour out your love into my heart by the power of your spirit, that it would overflow out of me because I am not able to love in the flesh, not the way we are called to love. And I've seen that in the Iranian church. Um, it's in the midst of crisis, you know, that level of love between them. And I'm thinking, I don't know if we're headed into even more, but if we have a demonstration of love, between us, the infectious power of the love of God through the people of God is going to transform lives. It just is. Just that mere expression of Christ's love between each one of us. And I'm aware of like barriers to cross in that and boundaries that need to come down. Barriers that need to be crossed and boundaries that need to come down. And that the Lord is saying, I, you're all one. There will be no unleashed in heaven. There will be no, uh, you know, all nations in heaven. I'm involved with all nations church. There'll be no Baptists in heaven. There'll be none of this. There'll be none of that. It will be one family in Christ. And just a call to, to come higher and see each other in the spirit and to love like we've never loved before. And in that, literally permission to extend the table to our closest, to our nearest, to our dearest, to, to people that God is putting his finger on and going, invite them to the table. Love them. Love them. Welcome them. Include them. And keep short accounts. Deal with the unforgiveness in your heart, and Deal with the stuff that needs to get healed up. Forgive quickly. This is a moment of turning in our hearts. So it's a moment of dealing with the junk that is stopping the flow of the Spirit in our relationships with one another. The second word is body. Body. I believe, you know, this is 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We know that. But that the Lord is working on his body at the moment and positioning the parts of the body by working in our hearts. And I've just been aware of it like a chessboard that's, that the Lord is kind of picking people up and moving them all over the place. And it's been so uncomfortable, hasn't it? And so weird, like, like weirdly challenging. But I thought we were with them for this long and now they're going over there and this is happening and that's happening. And like, what is going on, God? Again, it's kingdom architecture. I believe that God is positioning his people because of what's to come. Because he's saying, I need you there because of what you carry and I'm going to put that person alongside you. And I think it's a shift in our understanding instead of kind of grieving. I do think we need to grieve. Please hear that. But as well as that, going, I'm trusting that God is arranging the parts of the body just as he wants them to be in this season. And he's been saying to me, like, and I want you to pray this. How do I release space, create space, and take space? How do I release space, create space, and take space? And when I've said to him, but what's the answer to that, God? He says, the answer is getting on your face. 
The answer is getting on your face. And, and I just think that is a, like literally a humility, a humbling of our hearts and saying, I'm laying everything down at your feet, God. And, and I think some of it is, you know, I actually, we have to take the space as leaders we're meant to take. That's absolutely right and biblical. But we also have to keep releasing what God is doing and release each other into the positions that we're meant to be releasing into and actually calling people into the places that they're called to be into. And I'm, I'm praying that regularly and trying to pay attention to the detail that he's writing over each person's life. Because in the loving well, he's saying, look how I'm positioning them. And are you making space for that to come forth? And I saw us all like at the front of a race, just laid on our faces. And it's like, but we need to get ready to run, Lord. And he's like, yes, lie down. Lie down next to each other in a row. That's the best posture you can be in because then I can come in and do what I want to do. Lay it all, lay it all down before me. I think this fivefold peace uh, is becoming really central again. Christ as cornerstone, the foundations of the apostles and the prophets. I feel like I'm seeing that in the landscape more and more and hearing that language increasing. And God is going, the fullness of the fivefold, the fullness of the body. I want to see all my people move with what my spirit is doing. We're not going to leave anyone behind because we are going to walk forward into the promises of God. And nothing will stop the harvest coming in. Please, God, his spirit poured out on all people. My sons and my daughters will prophesy. You know, all people will receive the power of God. And where we've operated, perhaps quite hierarchical in terms of leadership, I think, you know, I'm seeing like my 11-year-old son, he's preached in our little home church setting. Uh, my 15-year-old daughter's been prophesying. And I think it's important that we see what's on the youngest and we call it out and raise it up and release it. And, you know, I've been most challenged by the youngest amongst us and God's saying look just listen watch and don't assume that you know Anne when I spend a lot of time in tears which does happen over the church because I I just my heart breaks with where I really believe we're calling we're being called to move to I just feel like quite often I'll see in my mind's eye the, the rows of chairs I love that we're in round tables, by the way, Andy. But the, the rows of chairs, and I just think, whatever's happening, we need to empower the pew sitter. Like, we need to empower every single one of our people. And we need, we need each other to do that. It's not on us as leaders. We all take responsibility for empowering one another and helping one another. And I think to, there's like a call right now that's ringing out for a raising of an army and mobilizing like a mission force and, you know, a, a, a Trojan army that is, is mobilized with the gospel so that we can actually meet the need in the, in the harvest. That's, that lies waiting for us. And I do not want to kind of get to that point where Jesus comes back, who knows when that is, and just be thinking, and have a load of people going, but we didn't know. But we didn't, we weren't ready. Like, but, but nobody told us that that, that that was what was happening in the minds of leaders. But nobody was, was sharing the gospel. No one was telling us how. No one was telling us what. No one was saying this. Like, and, and I just think we need to begin to just open up our lives to one another and give access and say, come on, we're doing this together. We're going, we're running together. And I'm fascinated that greater revelation has come to me as a speaker, as a teacher, as a writer in the last couple of years because of the people around me. And I've been thinking, yeah, more and more and more. I don't want to go alone. I don't want to be alone. We need each other the third word is bride. Let us rejoice and give him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. 
Love that verse, Revelation 19 and verse 7. Someone said to me recently that they were called to clean up the mess and ready the bride. Clean up the mess and ready the bride. And I was like, oof, that is a big calling. And I'd had a dream. Excuse me, I just got a bit of hair like stuck there. Um, I'd had a dream and it was a bizarre dream. Who's been dreaming? Has anyone been dreaming in this season? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it's been a funny one for dreams, hasn't it? I think more and more people are dreaming. If you're not dreaming and you want to dream, just ask because people keep receiving a lot of revelation in the space of dreams. Um, but there was this one that, that I had and I was in the house and I knew that lots of people were getting ready to come to the house for a meal and we weren't ready for the meal. And I remember like looking to where the dining table should be, like made ready, laid and food ready. And I looked into the kitchen and there should, I was thinking, where's the food? There was no food in there. And in the place of the dining table in the dining room, there were two washing machines. And I was just like, what on earth are the washing machines doing in the dining room? And I, for some reason, like having a go at my mum, like I used to have a go at my mum about this sort of thing. Why are we not doing this? Why is this not happening? And I found her in the garden hanging out washing. And I said, mum, the people are coming. Where is the feast? We need to get ready. And I just woke up. And I was just aware, like, whoa, what the heck? Like, why is the washing machines in the middle of the dining room? And as I kind of began to pray into that, I just felt like the Lord was showing me, this is like about a year ago, um, but just that we were not clean, that we are not like that bride made spotless. We were not in a position of like being washed and made ready for the bridegroom. Um, and that actually what the priority for the King of Kings is, and uh, like still now I believe, was to make his bride ready. Um, and so there's been a deep cleansing, very uncomfortable and deeply painful thing, a refining fire that's been going on in the bride um, to make us ready. And we've been going, but we're not doing anything like, but we're not, we should be doing that and we should be doing that and we should be ready for the feast and the people are coming and God's going, wait, 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 you're not ready. Let me wash you first. Let me wash you first. And that's so clear in scripture as well, isn't it? Like that they consecrate themselves. Like that they, they do that before they cross the Jordan, before they make any major moves. They get clean, they get washed. You know, who has clean hands and a pure heart and can ascend the hill of the Lord? And, that, and we've been in that space of washing and being made ready. And I suppose it's like being dressed ready with our oil in our lamps, isn't it? And I think it's time for just a wave of repentance to come back to the church. Uh, I have spent a lot of time repenting for really weird things. Um, a lot of time just praying on my face and just realizing, oh my goodness, I'm holding a grudge there. I've got an opinion here. And, and just God is just doing something so deep in our hearts so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish, Ephesians 5 and verse 27. And the final one was remnant. The final one is remnant. Isaiah 6 and verse 13, the holy seed will be the stump in the land. Isaiah 10, 21, a remnant will return. A remnant of Jacob will return to the mighty God. And I don't know about you, but we have been in uh, Haggai as well, haven't we? The shaking, and once more I will shake, has been the reality. And I don't know about you, I just about feel like everything's settled down. It's like a flipping another shaking happens. And I'm just like, oh my goodness, here we are again. Like shake, shake, shake. And I just think God is going, but is your foundation in me? Are you on solid ground? Are you anchored? Are you rooted in me? And in that space of shaking, it literally is like those trees being turned over and the roots coming up to the surface and, uh, that we've just seen because God's going, I'm cutting that off and I'm digging that out and I'm just going to remove that over there. And will you let go of it? Will you let me remove it? Because I want my remnant to come forth. And I'd seen like a digger just come across my vision and just dig up literally a whole tree, and the roots were deep, and it just went, whoosh, and just threw it up into the air. I was like, it was quick, it was urgent, it was sudden, and I just thought, it's now. 
It's now. God is moving and shifting and shaking. And why? Because he wants us to look like his church. He wants us to reflect his glory. He wants us like vessel ready for a mighty move of God in the land. And I believe that's coming to the United Kingdom in these days, that we become so infectious with the love of God that other people just look and go, what is that? Who is he that you know? And he's been on us. He's been on us to move us. He's been in us to transform us. And he's coming upon us to empower us by his Holy Spirit. And we are going to see signs and wonders if we allow this work of transformation to come in our hearts and through our lives. I genuinely believe that we are going to see many, many signs and wonders Finally, just, I just want to add this word, disciples, because this is about being in his footsteps. This is about being sent ones, missionaries. And, you know, we've sent missionaries overseas for years. They're coming back. They're coming back. They're coming here. I don't know why they're coming, but they know something's happening and they're coming. And they know God's called them to be here. And God is raising up missionaries amongst us. And he's saying, you are sent. You're sent for now. You go where I'm telling you to go. And he's getting us right back to who we are and saying, it's me and you. That's all that remains. That's all that's going to remain. It's just me and you. Let everything else fall to the ground. It comes back to loving me and loving one another. Amen. Amen.